Okay, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about 11 AC and uh, what to expect within the next couple of years. And uh, um, my name is Sean Rainierson. I run WiFiGeeks.org and I tweet at S. Rainierson. And uh, so, yes, as, I'll, I'll go around and finish oh, the oh, things up. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, my name is Keith Parsons. I'm with uh, Wireless Land Professionals and I tweet under Keith R. Parsons. And it's Chris Little. I run uh, WiFiKiwi.com and I tweet as WiFiKiwi. My name is Dan Sabalski. I run SimplyWiFi.co and I tweet as SimplyWiFi. Uh, my name is Jennifer Huber. I tweet as Jennifer Lucille and there's a link to my blog under there because I don't, the URL is far too long. To, <laughs> I, I'm not going to like this case. Okay. Go ahead, John. Well, as a customer, I have to deal with life cycles and product refreshers. And a big thing that's coming up now is should I keep buying 11N or should I wait till 11AC? Uh, what do you think about that? Do uh, y'all have customers asking you questions about that? I think it's pretty easy right now. If there isn't any 11 AC to buy. Yeah. The in enterprise quality should, stuff. Should so, I be waiting for the summer? Or, you know, you know that, that's, the, that's the perennial problem in IT. How close do you get inside yeah. that, that cycle? Okay. Uh, I don't know. What did you buy when, you, when N came out? Were you an N purchaser when it was, was pre-ratified? Yeah. No, it was, a, it was a year or two in. So... Yeah. We, we waited for a while. Yeah, we saw the, the first client devices started to come out when in came out, and there were lots of adapters to, to get you on to 11 in, but the majority of my customers at that stage, when in had first been ratified, we had some pre in stuff already deployed, but didn't really get into it in a big way until a little bit after the ratification of to 11 in. So I'm kind of expecting the same uptake cycle for, for 11AC, there'll be a bit of toe dipping first, people may be putting it in uh, high use areas and uh, waiting to see how many of their clients actually do it and then gradually ramping up to full campus rollouts. Well, something from the end rollout, there was some pre-end stuff that wasn't mm. cleanly, it didn't transition, mm -hmm. right. you, if you yeah. purchased you were stuck. <coughs> do you think we're going to have that same thing in AC, that there's going to be a I think there's probably going to be a lot of changes. Certainly the clients are going to be the ones that are going to drive the usage and how, how, far, how quickly we're going to have to transition. But I would say if you don't currently have an 802.11 deployment, you definitely need to get one um, because that's, that's a baseline now. And, and I see the uh, 802.11 AC deployments being single-use cases primarily. I don't see them being deployed enterprise-wide until we, I guess, come to an agreement on how wide the channel usage is going to be and what the channel plan is going to be. Because the, the wider the channel usage, the less channels you've got to choose from for a non-overlapping channel plan. So I see it being used in digital media signage and maybe OR rooms, specific stuff for packs, images, things like that. I don't see it being all floors, all APs, AC. I may eat my words in a few years, yeah. but I, I don't see that happening right now. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you there. I have, I have customers who are kind of in the middle of purchasing decisions, and they, they have this big strategy around 802.11 end deployments, and then they said, oh, well, we just read about AC and now is this going to be obsolete for us in a year or two down the line and I'm, I'm, I'm never a big fan of, of holding off on on deployments because you're you're chasing after the next thing that's going to be coming down the pipe because I mean it, once we have AC there's going to be another next thing down the pipe right so um, I, I would agree that I mean if you're if you're I would continue on the course you're going and uh, the initial AC stuff I, w I would say is, is going to be kind of Small well, spot concept. coverage group yeah. concepts within the organization. You're not going to see a blanket of AC initially over the entire organization. What do you think about the FUD that's going to be? I mean, I'm just oh, anticipating yeah. oh. that over the summer, the amount of marketing hype. I think it's uh, it's uh, marketing person's <laughs> most exciting thing around that they yeah, can talk about AC words. even though it's not there. Yeah, RDC on boxes, and... the fastest Wi-Fi in the world. <laughs> you know, already on, yeah, yeah, already yeah, on yeah, some boxes. 5G Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, these 160 megahertz channels, once they are capable of this, uh, are we even going to use that? Or when do you think think that's practical? What? I, I see. I like maybe if you have a billboard that you need to push data to, it yeah. could have a gigabit link, so that you could just be in your truck at the bottom and push up whoever with the vi video files to yeah. things like that. But or or, or buses that come back and want yeah, to dump their right. their video. Uh, the other is it also depends on what FCC comes up with and gives us back some more. Yeah. The little parts that are missing, so we yeah. can have some full More one sixty. The, the FC who now? <laughs> <laughs> also, oh, I think yeah. it'll, uh, it'll it'll help out when we get multi-user MIMO, and then that one hundred sixty 
you know, it's not all at once. It could be the multiple clients at the same time, you know. But again, you know, with Delta Moves, I'm waiting to 2014, yeah. perhaps before that gets there. The FCC one as well, they're saying that that's probably not going to happen in 2014. So I think the first go around may be more of a limited rollout for people just because they'll, they'll wait for some of those those more advanced features to be in place. And I'm curious how we're going to handle multiple antennas and end user devices as they get smaller and smaller. Yeah. In order to get that, you know, up, up, down from a well, small, tiny device. So, some phones are getting bigger. <laughs> yeah. well, the some, notes. De some devices are, are getting 40 megahertz, yeah. which is supporting. It's much better. Uh, in, in a test I ran back in January, uh, I used to be a proponent of keep with 20 megahertz channels because you have more of them and you want to yes. cut down on co-channel <clears throat> interference. And then when I ran the test, the 40s were so far superior to the 20s that uh, getting on and off the network quick enough allowed for a higher density. So okay. I'm kind of switching my, my mindset over to 40s. That, that's okay. Always so so your easier, opinion yeah. is that, that the wider bandwidths now are, are actually providing more capacity for the users so yeah. they, because they get the on and off the network quicker. Yeah, so we, we did <coughs> tests with regular iPads and iPad 4s, 3s mm. versus 4s, and the 4s support 40s, and they were so much faster, more than double. They said, oh, wait. It made everything go better. So, but but that's really a conversation for even further down the line, right? Because if, if we're saying 80 80 meg channels or whatever, right? Yeah, you're not going to see a phone with an 80 meg. <laughs> I, I, support, I don't. Right? I didn't think I was going to see an while. iPad yeah. or my iPhone fives have support 40s. Mm. And I think the the as we move to AC, that channel width question, we're going to have to do some more metrics to find mm -hmm. out is it really worth losing that other the number of channels right. for being able to get more devices on and off at the same time. And that yeah. comes with multi-user MIMO where that's going to even be better. But oh, when that, by the time, when that comes around, then we'll have a whole yeah. other set of discussions. Right. Uh, anyone think that's going to happen soon? No. No. <laughs> I think the, the, the interesting thing that multi-user MIMO brings into to the discussion is uh, the whole issue of whether to use beamforming or not to, to actually direct signals towards the clients. What about 256 Plum? I know I have a, a, a Soho device and I could not keep it to maintain that 256 Plum link. It, it, I, I, I wouldn't move it. Every once in a while I would get that data link. But yep. Well, I, when, I, when I tested I got, you know, really all the way out to a meter. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, oh, a whole meter? Oh, a whole meter. Oh, yeah. One whole meter. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> it, was, it was phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. so, so if we put APs every two meters, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's, it's all about the clients. I mean, we always talk about all about the clients. How many of you have a, a 802.11 AC client? I've seen two of them. Yeah, I read about, about it on it. the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it on a tech field day. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yes, yeah, but get, getting back to your other point, I think I, I do agree that in the short term, one of the biggest challenges we have is the whole marketing spin thing and, and educating customers and, and uh, technical people about what, what's really just marketing spin and what's actually important and what are they, the, the new features that are actually going to be useful. Because, um, I mean, it's, it's like when laptops and computers started, everybody was talking about how many gigahertz the processor was. Well, who cares about that stuff, right? And now we're running into the same problem on the wireless side. Everybody says, oh, well, it's a bigger number, so I need to buy that. Sean bought, he bought the, the world's <laughs> fastest <laughs> Soho AP, right? I know you didn't buy it for that reason. But, no, it was um, <clears throat> But people just see the big numbers, and then they don't really think about all the other stuff. And I think that's our short-term challenge is is education. Yeah. Education. There's going to be a lot of FUD, especially around the speed question as well, because uh, as, as was mentioned, unless you can hit that 256 climb, you're not going to be able to get the top speeds from the APs. And, and mm -hmm. I'm, I think uh, initially Aruba is just coming out with the three stream AP. That now, who is that? Something. What, what computer is that? <laughs> Aruba. Aruba. It's a subsidiary. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I mean, you, you've got to, you're going to be limited by what features are, but you can be sure that most of the marketers will be putting on the box the fastest speed possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, with an asterisk. Yeah. And, then, and then you're going to get the call when they're not getting that speed, right? Right. <laughs> Nobody writes at them before they put it in the network. We, yeah. we get 450 all the time now, right? Mm. Oh, yeah, easy. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Even in a warehouse. On, on that note, just for the fun thing, uh, you've got a Mac. Uh, what do you use to tell that you've got a 450 connection? Mine. Option Make click. 
So how do you tell? How do you, how do you use it? It doesn't say 450. No. Yeah, all you hold down the option key <coughs> yeah, and click on it. Option click. So that's one way. How do you do it on, on your Aces? I don't have 450 capabilities. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a slow? Does, does it show 65? Mine's only 2.4 anyway. So. <laughs> that poor thing. But I think that's also a useful feature. I use a tool called Y Spy mm -hmm. that you can actually see the number. It yeah. says 450 on the yes. screen. You don't have to click anything. And as you move around, you watch it change. You're like, oh, wow. It is very, very sensitive mm. to stay in that 450 range. You have to be just in the right place. I think when we go to uh, AC with bigger number sets, that's going to be all over the map. Okay. I mean, it's one of the benefits is that you have a nice smooth scale. You're not jumping 54 to, to 24. Mm. You did little stair steps in there, but knowing and seeing that. Uh, what have you found when you test tested yours, your AC? Um, it, was, it, it was just a quick little test. I, I was just trying to get that 256 link and I, I couldn't and, and maybe for a split second it would go up there and then bounce down to like three other different levels. Like you said, there's a whole bunch of stair steps and um, I, it, it actually w didn't stay constant and that made me think, which I never took out my analyzer, you know, how many uh, errors am I getting, how many retries because it's having to change that data rate or is it actually predetermining and changing before it has that error. I didn't get out my analyzer and check. but. And there's maybe some optimization with the particular client yeah. chipsets as well that needs to be done. I know that when N was first introduced, some of the chipsets have changed quite a lot in terms of the feature sets that they have since then. Well, we're recording this February 2013. Uh, let's take some guesses of when uh, we'll have smartphone, Android, or Apple clients with AC. I just want to correct you. This is March. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 early in the it's not even a big point. Forget it. Forget it. <laughs> Thank you for adjusting my calendar. But when do you think we're going to see? You know, well, isn't the Galaxy S4 coming out with the uh, AC? Is it? Just I don't know. Rumors. So. The new iPhone, right? <laughs> the new iPhone. We, we don't, I mean, they're, today they're just all rumors. But I think when those hit, either you know, a, a sub Maybe all the iOS. You know, it's going to require chipsets, so it's not going to be all iOS devices, only the new ones. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, the V4 iPads are 40 megahertz. I'm sure every iPhone and iPad from now on is going to be 40 megahertz. Uh, but at what point are we going to see the AC? That is AC? Christmas too soon. And it's driven by consumer spending, so it's going to be a Christmas time purchase, so maybe next Christmas. Because that would give enough lead time for devices to, you know, but like the big bulk purchasing happens around Christmas time. So, so. we still have another nine months to... Get our networks all ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit small. <clears throat> all right. So we have a, a question from Twitter. Uh, Bruce Johnson on Twitter asks, uh, does the dynamic nature of 11AC with 40, 80, and 160 megahertz wide allocations ease the transition to 11AC? Uh -oh. I would say that it does because, it, it, like we were talking about, you have to be um, a, at least a meter away from the access point to get the 256 QAM. Right. There's a lot more step down, uh, higher speed step downs for an 80211 AC access point. So just because right. you're not getting the gigabit, you could be getting much closer to that at a further distance. I, I think the question was really asking the dynamicness of the 4080-160. It gives you lots of options. But it gives you options. But I don't want to design my channel plan Around with these big wide ones no. to start. Mm -hmm. no. I would rather <clears throat> let the AC do its work inside what I say. Okay, we're going to be at 40. I might talk about 80s when, if clients can support right. them. So I don't know if I'd like AC to be floaty all over the place with the channels, even though it can. Right. Yeah. It, it's hard. How do you say, are we ever going to use that back half of the 80? And there are some features that are built within AC that help with... Um, devices that can't do those wider channels as well. Like they, they have the abilities to to do uh, CTS right. to, to devices that are only able to do 40 megahertz channels, for example. And those features actually help with the transition in that way. But when you look at packets and time, the CTSs take longer of in the air yeah. than the payload. Yes. So just because you can do it, this isn't one of those things you should. Uh, kill the time of, even though it's possible, it's a, it's a very inefficient way of, of using that. And the whole reason to go to AC with the speed is to get the efficiency. Yes. 
So you think you've answered Bruce's question? I hope so. I guess he'll tell us if we do. <laughs> <laughs> we well, understand you know, what he was saying first, and then. Yeah. Right. Well, we answered it both ways, kind of. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting for me as in somebody outside the Wi-Fi space. Um, I kind of understand. I, I, my understanding of where he's going with that question is actually something that I've been thinking about too, which is, you know, you had 11N, which had a whole bunch of features that were and that were optional. So everybody's 11N was not the same as everybody's 11N, you know. And I think a lot of people thought just because I'm going to N, it means that everything's going to be great now. And a lot of people didn't see any real difference. Is there a chance that with AC we're going to have the same thing, where people are going to get an AC client and AC access point? and suddenly say, okay, let's, wait, what's going on? There's nothing special here. There's no difference here. Yes, <laughs> especially yeah. within this next year or two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the best things about AC is that it's mostly gonna be on, I mean, you, you, you're get finally getting away from 2.4. Well, having said that, uh, there, uh, you're right that there were a lot of features in M that were introduced that were made optional that uh, may have not worked out in quite the same way as They've learned some lessons from in as to, to what works and what doesn't with those features, and they've, they've changed and cleaned up some of the features with AC, which should revolt, uh, result in some efficiencies. With yeah, they, they've learned lessons, but they're, they're bound to make all new mistakes, yes, right? So true. it's just, <laughs> yeah, we won't have those same reoccurring things. There'll be brand new issues. Brand new ones, so. yes. 